Thanks for joining me right now. This is a bit of an experiment. Um, you may know that a human rights activist uh, called Nabil Rajab, uh, also somebody I admire, uh, I would count as a friend, uh, wrote a letter from a Bahrain jail that appeared in the New York Times a couple of days ago. And uh, he was accusing Bahrain of repression. The Bahrain king, King Hamad, then kind of proved Nabil's point by charging him with further offenses or damaging the image of Bahrain. Now, I'm barred from Bahrain. I can't go there to report. So let's try something. Let's call up the Bahrain embassy on Facebook Live and see what they have to say for themselves and why they imprison people for writing op-eds in the New York Times. So I don't know what's going to happen. Let's, let's find out. I'm going to first call the... Um, uh, the uh, embassy in um, uh, uh, in Washington. Uh, it's a member of the uh, royal family, the Al Khalifa family. Um, and let me also just show you um, the. So uh, this is Nabil. Uh, this is a picture of Nabil that I took um, a few years ago. He's examining U.S. made. Uh, tear gas grenades uh, that the U.S. sells to Bahrain that are used to, to crush protests. Um, and uh, here's, the, uh, here's the piece that he wrote, uh, his letter from Bahrain jail uh, that got him in further trouble. And um, here's, a, um, here's an editorial that the New York Times ran uh, today about his case. Uh, and raising questions about whether we in the U.S. should really have our fifth fleet in a country that is so repressive, so fundamentally repressive. Um, that's our side. Let's see what the Bahrain ambassador has to say. Um, Listen carefully to the menu. Let me try four for the, see if I can get the ambassador. Hi, this is Nicholas Kristoff at the New York Times. I wanted to speak to the ambassador to ask him why Bahrain is uh, imprisoning dissidents for writing op-eds here in the New York Times. Uh, I'll call again in a few moments. Um, so if you can be ready for the call, you are on Facebook Live, and we're going to continue having a little discussion about repression in Bahrain in the meantime. Uh, I'll also try uh, the press office. Um, thanks so much. For people now, just tuning in, will you explain? So if you're right? just tuning in, um, the Bahrain government, our great ally in the Middle East, has charged a leading human rights activist, Nabil Rajab, uh, because he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. Uh, and Nabil was earlier imprisoned uh, partly for tweeting against the war in Yemen. So he tweets against uh, crimes against humanity in Yemen. He's imprisoned. Then he writes a letter from prison uh, denouncing repression. 
and he faces further charges. So we'd like to hear what the Bahrain government has to say for itself. Um, let's end, you know, I'm sure that there are government officials in Bahrain who are watching this frantically wondering what to do. You might call the ambassador and tell him we're going to continue this little seminar on Bahrain repression until I get through to somebody, okay? Um, let's, um, let's try uh, again, uh, the, this time call for the press office. If you want to call the Bahrain uh, Embassy, you can reach them at 202 342 1111. You have reached the Embassy of the Kingdom of Bahrain in Washington, D.C. Please just reach I think press was three. Let me try that. For our menu in English, please dial 2. Please visit us on the web at www. Please wait a moment. Uh, hello, this is Nicholas Kristof uh, from the New York Times. Is this the press office? Uh, this is the concert office. Uh, how can I help you? Um, so, uh, you're on Facebook Live. I am um, uh, I'm wanted to get a response from the ambassador or another official from the embassy to the uh, charges against Nabil Rajab for writing an op-ed here in the New York Times. And uh, so, uh, and I, I, I do want to explain that right now you are on uh, Facebook Live, so there are people watching. Okay, um, so, uh, so Frank, though, I don't know whom to forward this uh, line to. Uh, the thing is, like, if you, um, do you have, if you have a question, you can email it to the department. Yeah, that doesn't work so well on Facebook Live, though. So, uh, what I prefer is if the ambassador would come on and would explain why they are imprisoning people for writing op-eds. Uh, okay, so hold on a second, let me transfer to the uh, ambassador's office. Okay, one second. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Maybe we'll have Nabil on the background here. Hi, um, my name is Nicholas Kristoff. I'm a columnist at the New York Times, and um, I want to explain that right now you're on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, I'm, uh, I wanted to get a response from the ambassador to the charges against Nabil Rajab uh, in Bahrain for writing an op-ed here in the New York Times. Actually, the ambassador is not here. He has meetings outside the embassy. Okay, and uh, what about the DCM or somebody else who could speak for Bahrain? Yeah, the DCM is out of town. Can you give me your name and number, or can you email me, please? Uh, so my my name is Nicholas Kristoff. Um, uh, How do you spell the last name? It's K R I S T O F. That's like and, Frank at the end. That's correct. F like Frank. And I would rather um, just stay on hold while. Perhaps you could find somebody who could comment for the press. I don't know if there's a press spokesman in the embassy. Uh, yeah, I have to call you right back. So give me how about if I stay? Uh, how about if I just stay on hold? We have. I have something to do right now because I'm. No, no one available right now. So I have to call you back. Okay, I'll call you back in uh, a few minutes. What is the? Um, so I have the embassy number. What is the extension? What was the question you want to know about the new job? Yeah, if you can pass on maybe a few different questions. One is, why prosecute Nabil Rajab for writing uh, an op-ed in the New York Times? Um, earlier, why prosecute Nabil for tweeting against uh, the war in Yemen? Um, and fundamentally, I guess third, you know, if 
Bahrain regards Nabil Rajab or any human rights activist as violating the law for damaging the image of Bahrain, then doesn't King Hamad damage the image of Bahrain far more when he fires on unarmed protesters or tortures uh, dissidents? Um, you can, uh, you know, let me let me call you back um, in uh, a little bit. I've got, I'm going to be on the line with my uh, Facebook Live giving a little seminar about Bahrain. Uh, so let me call you back. What is your um, what is your extension? Great. So I call 202-342-1111 and then extension 800? Right. Thanks so much. I'll call back in, in five minutes or something. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So this gives us a little window to explain why it is I'm calling, why it is I care about this. And, you know, um, it so happened that I was in Bahrain during the uh, pro-democracy protests. And, you know, the backdrop is that Bahrain is an amazing country that has so much going for it, that historically has done a wonderful job emancipating women, educating its people, building tolerance, um, and uh, it's really uh, has been an incredibly commendable uh, place in the Middle East. Its ambassador to Washington until recently was a Jewish woman, a member of the uh, the small Bahrain Jewish community, which I think kind of uh, reflects that that historic tolerance. But then, but the basic problem for the royal family is that they are Sunni, and a majority of the Bahrain population is Shia. So, one avenue would have been to increasingly give democratic rights uh, to the majority population and have the royal family play sort of a more symbolic role. They didn't want that. They wanted power for themselves. And so, um, in 2011, when you began to have pro-democracy protests, the government had a decision to make. That's when I was there, um, and uh, there were these... Uh, uh, this is a peaceful protest in Bahrain. People are shouting, peace, peace, Salmiya, Salmiya. Government opens fire on them. Um, and uh, the, the, these were completely unarmed protesters. The, the soldiers were far away, and they just opened up uh, without warning on these protesters. Um, and uh, then I was in the, um, then at the hospital, and I want to warn you that some of these, oh, this was a, this was a protest um, uh, at the time, and this was, you know, the protesters uh, had signs saying things like, no discrimination in one nation, no Sunni, no Shia, only Bahraini. Uh, things that people should not be gunned down for. Um, and then, uh, you know, some of these photos are, uh, disturbing, um, um, uh, this is a, if I remember right, this is a doctor, uh, who was, uh, clubbed, uh, actually, no, this is, this is different, that was, doctor was a different person, uh, uh, uh these are people who were shot uh, in the, uh, this is the doctor. This is a doctor who was treating uh, people who were being injured by the protesters. The doctor was clubbed uh, into a coma because he was treating protesters. And, you know, as a journalist, when I see that, um, I find that pretty offensive, especially when this is by our allies, when they're using American military equipment. Um, Last, for a time, the U.S. suspended military sales to Bahrain, and now they, uh, last year, they, they resumed them. Kind of gave a, a green light to Bahrain to go ahead with this kind of uh, arrest and torture. If you are just tuning in, and then let me explain. So the Bahrain government uh, has charged a human rights activist, Nabil Rajab, with crimes for writing an op-ed in the New York Times denouncing oppression. And so he denounces repression, 
and King Hamad proves his point by um, uh, by charging him with further offenses. Um, and uh, so. Um, we actually have a lot of international viewers that are okay. just commenting from where they're from. Um, we have Douglas Call watching from The Hague, Bill watching from Orange, California, uh, Rita is an American in Tel Aviv, and Well, I hope King Hamad is watching from Bahrain. <laughs> yeah. Um, people in Vienna, Alberta, Berlin, Lagos, Nigeria, Philippines. That's good. Well, let's, um, let's also maybe uh, try uh, uh, again um, the, you know, maybe we should try the U.S. Uh, the mission to the uh, U.N. Um, this time. Um, so before I was calling the Bahrain ambassador um, in, and we have another message. For instruction in Arabic, dial 1. If you know your party's extension, please dial it now or dial 0 for an operator. Please hold while I try that extension. If you are a Bahraini official, um, then I would encourage you to get an ambassador in there. Hi. Uh, can I have the ambassador secretary, please? Sure. Hello? Hi, uh, this is Nicholas Kristof uh, from the New York Times. And uh, you're actually on Facebook Live right now. I'm, I'm uh, doing a broadcast of the call. Um, I wanted to get a comment from the ambassador on the uh, criminal charges against Nabil Rajab for oh, writing an op-ed. Can you hold on one second? Absolutely. I have to check the ambassador with you. Sure. Okay. I think that um, if you are a Bahrain official, then I really would encourage you to have somebody come forward because the seminar is going to continue and there's a lot more dirt to go through. Some viewers are asking, where's the U.S. State Department in all this? So, the U.S. government has not played a very helpful role, partly because we have um, two substantial interests there. One is the Fifth Fleet is based in Bahrain, and so that makes us unwilling to second-guess the Bahrain government too much. And secondly, we are very concerned about Iranian uh, interests in that area, and there's concern that if one pushes the Bahrain regime too much, then that will, uh, that ultimately Iran could uh, grab hold of Bahrain and turn it into a kind of a satellite. I think that makes a mockery of the Bahrain people. I mean, they, they don't want to be a satellite of anybody. They want a democracy. They don't want to be clubbed in the streets. Uh, and the State Department has been better on this than the Pentagon. The military basically doesn't want to think about these issues. They want to focus on the Fifth Fleet. Um, the State Department initially was trying to work with Bahrain, work with the reformers. They thought that the Crown Prince, uh, Prince Salman, was a reformer. Um, that essentially failed. The hardliners have won in Bahrain, uh, the Prime Minister in particular, the Al Khalifa family. And so the government of Bahrain has gone all out uh, trying to um, crack down on protesters, destroy the opposition, and change the demography of Bahrain because it is a majority Shiite. They want to bring in Sunnis from Syria, from Pakistan, from other countries so that it so that it becomes a majority Sunni country. Uh, they've knocked down Shia mosques. Um, and what I find most perverse is that they have tried to uh, 
a sideline, in prison, and exile, the peaceful uh, protesters, the human rights activists, so that the protesters who are left are young and sometimes violent. And uh, the Bahrain government says, and it's absolutely right, that some of those protesters are, are violent and extremists. Um, and that violence should be condemned, absolutely. But it's because the Bahrain government has imprisoned people like Nabil Rajab that you have these uh, kids out in the street who are, um, who are turning to violence. And um, the Bahrain government also doesn't want witnesses, which is why it doesn't let journalists like me into the country to report. Uh, last time I was in Bahrain, uh, I was actually uh, detained, um, but they treat, when they detain a New York Times journalist, they're gentle. When they detain a local Shia, um, they're completely brutal, and uh, people have died in custody. Are you still on hold? I think I'm still on hold. Um, and who are, who are you waiting to speak with now? So I'm waiting to speak to the ambassador to the UN, who is probably frantically wondering what to say. And, you know, how do you justify imprisoning a human rights activist for writing an op-ed in the New York Times? Uh, how do you justify imprison, uh, imprisoning that same activist earlier for opposing crimes against humanity in the war against Yemen? that the Bahrain government uh, has, is part of the coalition. Of, and, and shamefully, the U.S. is part of that coalition uh, as well. Um, so uh, the ambassador secretary has said that she would, uh, uh, she would check if the ambassador is in. And um, I suspect that the last thing he wants to do is have a conversation about imprisonment, repression, and torture by his government in Bahrain by our ally, Bahrain. You know, maybe I should, uh, it's been six minutes. Um, Do you want to use my phone to call the other number? Uh, yeah, let me do that. Um, let me call our other ambassador. Um, so now I'm going to call the embassy in uh, Washington and see who they can put us in touch with. And you called them a little bit ago, right? Yeah, and they said to call back. Hi, uh, this is Nicholas Kristoff again from the New York Times, and uh, again, you're on Facebook Live. I wondered if you were able to find somebody who could speak, uh, speak for... Okay. So there's nobody in the entire uh, Bahrain Embassy in Washington who is prepared to defend the Bahrain government's uh, arrest and imprisonment of dissidents? Nobody in the whole embassy is prepared to, to defend repression? Okay, well, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that nobody uh, was prepared to um, give the, the pro-repression, pro-torture side, but, but uh, thanks very much. I'll try the uh, Bahrain uh, mission in New York. Thank you. And uh, now, oh, you know, we did get uh, cut off. Let me try the mission in New York again. <laughs> they simply hung up while we were on hold. They may be watching this nervously. Okay, let's see what we get. Thank you for calling the 
permanent mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations. شكرا لاتصالكم بالوفد الدائم لمملكة البحرين لدى الأمم After the tone, please say your name and company. Nicholas Kristoff, The New York Times. Your call is very important. Please continue to hold. <laughs> so what did they say on the cell phone? Oh, so they... Uh, hi, can I have the ambassador secretary, please? Um, they said nobody was available in the Bahrain embassy uh, to speak. <laughs> and the poor secretary isn't answering her calls either. Hi, uh, is this the ambassador secretary? He's not answering. Could you hold it just a minute? Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Um, um, you know, I'm laughing a little bit, but this is a serious issue with an ally of ours that is systematically repressing and torturing uh, its citizens using American equipment to do so in ways that undermine that country's stability, that undermine the region. He's not answering. Can you leave? Would you like to leave your phone number or call back in 10 minutes? Uh, the fact so. Is there a uh, voicemail that I can leave for the ambassador? She transfers a call for me. So um, once you give me your phone number, I have her call you like in 10 minutes. Uh, it's okay. I'll just call back. Thanks so much. I'm sorry. You need to get the... You need to give me that number? Uh, no, I'll just call back. I'm, um, we're on Facebook Live, so I can't really take calls right now, cause I, and I'm, but I'm doing a little seminar about repression by Bahrain, so um, I can use the time. Okay, so you want to call her back? Yeah, I will. Okay. Uh, she's, she's been a top of her. Also, say that Saudi Arabia is a critical player in this. Saudi Arabia has been encouraging the hardest line forces uh, uh, in Bahrain, and and has been um, going uh, repressing Shia in its own uh, eastern state of Saudi Arabia as well. There is, in a broader sense, sort of a a civil war throughout the Middle East between the Sunni and Shia, and Saudi Arabia and the Gulf states as uh, Sunni-controlled countries are um, uh, brutally repressing uh, the, the Shia. So I'm focused on Bahrain right now because it is I'm our... I'm sorry, story. she's not answering. Um, okay, you want to call her in 10 minutes? I'll call her in, yeah, in just a little bit. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Um, and uh, uh, that uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, I think, bears some responsibility for the way it is um, portraying the uh, Shia as non-Muslims, as infidels, as people to be crushed and uh, destroyed in ways that are very much reminiscent of the views of ISIS. If you wonder how ISIS becomes so intolerant, uh, those views flow from Saudi Arabia fundamentally. You also have Bahrainis uh, who have played a role in ISIS. And to see this happening from a country like Bahrain that historically was associated with education, with tolerance, with the emancipation of women, and now becoming a symbolism of repression, of bloodshed, uh, of intolerance, is enormously sad to see, um, and I only hope that at some point, perhaps after King Hamad dies, the country will come to its senses and evolve in a more democratic direction. I don't want to try your patience uh, too much longer, um, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll call this quits right now.
What are the numbers again? That so if you, maybe you'll have better luck than I am in getting a Bahrain official to, uh, to defend uh, repression, uh, torture, uh, and the imprisonment of dissidents for writing op-eds here in the New York Times. If you want to try um, uh, Ambassador Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa in Washington, his number is 202-342-1111. And um, give Ambassador Abdullah my regards. Um, and if you want to try the Bahrain mission to the UN, uh, then that's uh, uh, Ambassador Jamal Faris al Rawai. And uh, Ambassador uh, Jamal's number is 212-223-6200. And again, if you do uh, speak to him, then uh, please give uh, him um, my thanks for appearing as a um, non-visible role in this little Facebook Live. And I do hope that they will engage reporters and critics and people around the world who historically have admired Bahrain but have been truly troubled to see this government fire on its people, torture them, and, and imprison them for expressing their thoughts. And one final word to King Hamad, if you want to imprison Nabil Rajab because you say that he damages the image around the world of Bahrain, then frankly you should conduct a citizen arrest of yourself because you do far more damage to the image of Bahrain than Nabil Rajab ever did. Thanks for joining my Facebook Live.